I stayed off social media, stayed in my room, talked to friends and family, and stuck to what I knew. Mm, simple. So, Acho, what's your reaction to Sidney McLaughlin and staying away from social media during the Olympics? I think Sidney McLaughlin's genius. I think Sidney McLaughlin is brilliant. I will start um, by saying this. Uh, jealousy will have people hating on someone they should be learning from. Mm -hmm. I heard that recently. Jealous I saw that. Jealousy will have you hating on somebody you should be learning from. So let's learn from Sydney. Let's not be jealous of Sydney. Sydney McLaughlin, a 21-year-old world record-holding young black woman who oh. was dominant in her field. Let's go. She went out. She had an objective. She had a goal, if you will, to win a gold medal. We've also seen young, dominant women have similar objectives. Simone Biles, the greatest uh. gymnast of all time, 24 years young, still young, still learning. Naomi Osaka, one of the greatest tennis players playing right now, 23 years young, dominant, incredible athlete. Sha'Carri Richardson, 21 years young, the greatest American sprinter this year, dominant, incredible athletes. Sha'Carri, 21. Naomi, 23. Simone, 24. Then there's Sydney McLaughlin, who was just 21. Sha'Carri, Naomi, Simone, they all had the goal of getting a gold medal at this year's Olympics. They all verbalized that either publicly or you know they verbalized it internally. Mm. Sydney McLaughlin also had the goal, but only one of them achieved that goal. Mm. So, Sel, mm. if I share a goal with three other people and I, along with two other people, fall short, but one person succeeds, the question now is this. What did they do that I didn't? Mm. What can I learn from them? Because I'm not going to let jealousy <laughs> cause me to hate on somebody I should be learning from. Ooh. So what could I learn from Sydney? Well, what did Sydney say that she did? She stayed off social media. We all know for a fact that our other young superstars didn't necessarily do that. We know that Sha'Carri, we know that Naomi, we know that Simone didn't necessarily do what Sydney McLaughlin did. Remember, Sydney McLaughlin went to the Olympics at 16, five years ago. So Sydney McLaughlin has been the top of her sport. Sydney McLaughlin has national uh, sponsorships. Tag her watch, just like Naomi has national yeah. sponsorships. Sydney McLaughlin has a plethora of followers on social media, just like all these other young, brilliant women. Mm. But Sydney McLaughlin <laughs> got the gold where others wanted to get the gold and did not get the gold. So what was the difference? She stayed off social media. I don't know if staying off social media guarantees you success, but being off social media appeared to guarantee failure for the others. Mm -hmm. So my biggest takeaway is learn from what Sidney McLaughlin did, and in the heat of the battle, maybe just stay off social media. Man. <laughs> Osmosis, brother. We are rubbing off on each other because I don't... People don't understand. We do not discuss what we're going to say out no. here. And no matter what you say, speak for yourself. I'm going to respect it. People have to understand about me that I am a person that when I disrespect, I do it respectfully. Mm -hmm. Because I just disagree with you, really. I don't care that deeply. I know what I want to subscribe to in culture and mindset, and I understand what you're going to show me through actions and through conversation. So I love that what you just said. Now I'm going to echo it, and then I'm also going to say it in my own way. This is so refreshing, so refreshing to see Sydney show this level of maturity, clarity, and discernment at this young age. She kept her eyes on the prize, brother. Seriously. And she knew that her discipline, her actions, her words, everything had to be in alignment so that she could attain that same prize. Unfortunately, you listed a few names. Naomi, Simone, Shakiri, took their eyes off that prize for different reasons and different things were circumstantial that made them see differently. Sydney is amazing because Sydney had some of the same obstacles and she decided to Keep her eyes on the prize. This is who the machine should get behind, Sydney. This is who the machine needs to get behind. Why? Because it's not just about the performer or the performances. It's about the principles. Someone who could really represent for you. Someone who could truly be an ambassador for you. Someone who shows that professionalism that I'm respecting like Sydney McLaughlin. I don't want to contrast her and compare her necessarily to them, but I just want to show what the actions can lead you to that is going to be different than their responses. Woo! She talks about her circle of influence, like her circle of concern, the people she care most about, the people that's going to really prop her up, because she knows what social media is. 
It's the place where people go and displace their inadequacies. Mm -hmm. It's like, is this, uh, oh, I'm going to be this fresh today, and I'm here, and then I'm going to be this mad, so I'm going to take it out on you. And it's just the jungle. And then it's so funny, people try to walk through the jungle looking for nice, tame lions. It's the jungle. Ain't nobody out there really loving you. That's why there's not a love button. It's a like button. We like you until you say something we don't agree with, and then we're going to either tell you we unfollow you or we're just going to unfollow <laughs> you. And Sydney, like, I ain't running that race. I'm running a race to win a gold medal and set a world record in the 400-meter hurdles. How in the hell telling the world what I eat, what I'm wearing today, how my nails look, how long my hair is, is going to help me hop over these hurdles and get that world record again? So the beautiful thing about Sydney is someone has grounded her, someone has reared her, or she just has attained it herself where she's like, look, that's where I want to go, and the path of least resistance is staying right in front of that and in tune with that. Oh, so many people want to resist temptation. They say the only way to resist temptation is to avoid it. <laughs> and she is genius, like you said, for doing this. So uh, applause to Sidney McLaughlin because she's showing it's not just demographic. It's not just age-based. It's not just based on any of those criteria that everyone's trying to say. It's based on if you really want it, be greater than your greatest excuse. Yes, sir. And let's, let me make it abundantly clear that this is not pitting one person up against another yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What this is doing is saying, what can we all learn from Sidney McLaughlin? Mm -hmm. But if I most closely fit in just about every demographic bucket is Sidney McLaughlin, then what can I specifically learn from Sidney McLaughlin? When I played linebacker in the league, I tried to study other great linebackers. Facts. Or great, much greater than I. Luke Keekley, we came out together. What's he out here doing? Bobby Wagner, future Hall of Famer. We came out together in the NFL draft. What's he out here doing? Dante Hightower, probably a future Hall of Famer. We came mm. out together. What's he out here doing? Let me study his work so I can improve myself. Yeah. In the same manner, I encourage our young athletes, particularly our young athletes that are women, our young athletes that are black women, that all have to face probably the same set of circumstances, mm. generally speaking, outside of your own personal mm. circumstances, study Sydney and figure out how did she do what I could not do. Sell, if you, I, and two others created a lemonade stand and mine went bankrupt, <laughs> yours went bankrupt, John's went bankrupt, but Peter's sold his and turned it into an incredibly profitable business. You want to know what we should do? Ask this figurative individual named Peter, hey, big dog, what did you do that we all did not do that made you successful? Mm. And in the same breath, I think everybody needs to look at Sidney McLaughlin and say, hey, what did you do that we all did not do that made you successful? Ooh. On the next lap, though, Ooh. I got a question for you to get oh. into a bigger dialogue. Okay, I just had a conversation with somebody who is a big name, way bigger than mine. Not yours, necessarily, but on your level. And I'm not going to say his name just because I didn't get permission okay. to say this smart conversation. Man, it man. can make him look a little yes, different. Sir. He said, what's wrong with people today? He was, we were talking about, like, why so many people get in their own way in terms of their own success. And he's huge, big time. And he said, you know why? Because most people want attention or credit. And he said, that's what undermines them in terms of getting there all the way. And I was like, break that down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and now mm -hmm. I don't need him to break that down because I can see what's going on. I can see these youngsters out there when all of a sudden they pop. They want so much attention, and they want all the credit to come to them. And then you know what they notice what they all do? Talk about it. All of a sudden, they say, this burden of expectation is so heavy. And I'm like, wait a minute. My grandma told me a long time ago, you can't call for attention, baby, and hang up. Mm -mm. Once you call for attention, that phone is on. So I try to caution these kids, watch what you try to take on, because it's going to hit back. And they all do it. And that dude broke that down to me, and I want to say, dude, you know who you are. We're going to talk about this now, because we got more examples. Here's the thing. Sydney also made a comparison that I just made with the, the L.A. Chargers a couple weeks ago. She was talking about inputs and outputs. Like, what do you plug into? She plugged into her family and friends. Mm -hmm. She plugged into her circle of influence, her circle of concern, which is small, smart. I'm a former DJ. I, why I say former? Because I really used to DJ. Now I just play songs. I used to DJ concerts, festivals, Super Bowls, everything. Kanye, Outkast, you name it. I was back there doing this. And one thing I noticed when I was doing the bigger events versus me at the crib, mm -hmm was the soundboard. 
Yeah, anybody ever been to any big concert? Check out the soundboard. It goes from stadium sideline to stadium sideline, and it's nothing but all of these knobs. And what it is is just inputs, 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 all of these components out there. And then, this is why this is a great parallel to this situation. Think about it in terms of mental health. Input, input, social media, what this person said, what they doing, my friends, my family, all inputs, right? The longer the soundboard, the more channels on the soundboard, the more inputs, the more difficult, the more genius you have to be in engineering the perfect sound. If you want to be in harmony, sound great, have it all perfectly in tune, oh, brother, with all those inputs, you're going to have to work some knobs. And everyone thinks, max them all out. That's the worst sound. Pull them all down. That's the worst sound. It's up, down, here, tweak, tweak, tweak. Problem is, everybody at home, that, especially these kids, are putting in so many things and not tuning it properly. So then they hear noise. They're not hearing that sweet sound they're supposed to hear like you do when you go to that concert. Sydney said, unplug, 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 unplug. Only three channels? Oh, I could do that. Bass, mid, treble. <laughs> it's not that hard. Please, people, understand this. Unplug, and then maybe it will be calmer in here. Ooh, that was such a good take. I take it. <laughs> that was such a good take. I take it. Um, we got one more. Lab, here's though. the question. Okay. Here's the question. Okay. You can't call for attention and hang up. You can't. You can't do it. Come on, bro. But you have to ask yourself. I've had to ask myself. What is the ultimate win here? Mm. Sydney does, in fact, have a gold medal and a world record. And currently, she is the only one of those other three athletes that achieved her maximal Olympic athletic success. Emphasis on the word athletic Fact. for those at home that are saying, well, someone mentally. I understand that. Mm. Simone, uh, um, um, Sydney achieved the athletic maximal success. She's the only one that actually took home an individual gold medal. Mm -hmm. But. Was uh, the biggest take home? Uh oh, oh, here we go. I know. Uh, uh, think about here it, Here we go. All right. A month ago, Shakari Richardson only had 300 Instagram followers. Shakari Richardson wasn't in a Beats by Dre commercial. Shakari Richardson wasn't in a Beats by Dre commercial, which had a Kanye West song that hadn't even been released at, yet on the commercial. Yeah. Shakari Richardson didn't have 2 million Instagram followers, which she now has been tweeted at by the likes of Michelle Obama, Diddy, Patrick Mahomes, Gabrielle Union, et cetera. Naomi Osaka, two months ago, she didn't have a Netflix series out. She hadn't been on the cover of Time Magazine, hadn't been on the cover of Vogue. Simone Biles, I don't know where her social media following was prior to the last week, but I know it was not exactly where it is now. Now, Cindy McLaughlin does have a thriving social media following. <laughs> it's this day and age, y'all. This is how we got to measure some things by social media. Oh, she has her 860,000 followers or so, but she has the medal. So the question truly becomes, Let's go. what is the real win? Yeah. Because the gold medal's the real win athletically. But I've said this all along. Sha'Carri didn't take an L, y'all. Because mm, if yeah, Sha'Carri yeah. simply wins gold and doesn't get disqualified because of the positive test for weed, I don't know if she's in a Beats by Dre commercial. We ain't seen no other track and field athlete in a Beats by Dre commercial partnering with Kanye West. Mm. So was that a bigger win? Then had she gone to the Olympics and gotten silver or gotten bronze? Naomi Osaka, she's revolutionized the industry right now, captivated all of her eyes. Mm -hmm. Is that a bigger win than maybe had she won gold at the Olympics? Simone Biles, she has everybody, not everybody, but a large amount of the world pouring out support, empathy, et cetera. Was that a bigger win maybe than yeah. pulling home more gold medals like Sidney McLaughlin did? I think that's truly the nuanced aspect of this conversation. Yes, it really is. And let's talk about that. I don't know what time we got. It says, yeah, they just added some time. Good for that. Um, what you're talking about is brand building and failure. Uh, how do you fail forward? Um, I think Colin Kaepernick was the first in this demographic of athlete kind of compromised on the field and all of a sudden, how can I promote this into something greater and how can I also benefit off of something greater? Now, I don't know if he was calculated or not. I've talked to his mentor and I've watched him from a distance and I knew him obviously before all that. But I do know what we're talking about, a phenomenon. It, we're talking about people who are not necessarily all of a sudden reaching their full potential in the endeavor we know of more but they become bigger in celebrity in other ways. You're right. Kaepernick is bigger than ever than throwing touchdowns. Like, right? Respect. Sherry got bigger by getting disqualified, which Shakari, is weird. Yep. Shakari, sorry. Shakari did. Interesting. Um, Naomi, 
didn't finish the French Open, got to the Olympics, couldn't even get out the third round, and is continuing to snowball in success in other ways. But in terms of her on the court, she's not number one ranked anymore. Like, she's going down that hill and still building a bigger brand. Uh, you look at Sydney, she's the anomaly. She's actually doing what we know her for and what she's supposed to do and is still building that brand. So this takes me back to childhood. Did I leave anybody out? Uh, Simone Biles. Mm -hmm. Well, she's the GOAT, but it's hard to be greater than the GOAT, but third place ain't GOAT. Jumping out of a couple of events, not GOAT. Quitting on your team's not GOAT, but she's coming from such heavens and heights. Let's talk about this. I used to talk about this when I was little because I saw a lot of d drug dealers and gangbangers, and I saw a lot of popular kids, and I saw a lot of people winning in high school. And I was like, damn, you know what? I'm not going to hate these people because everybody wins. It's just what race do you want to win? Mm. I used to, no lie, I never have jealousy. Why? Because I'm like, that's the race you want to win. My boys who wanted to be popular became popular. What did that get you at the end? Like, some of these things are cul-de-sacs. Like, you're running somewhere and everybody think, damn, chill. They're coming back. <laughs> They're coming back. Because think about it. If Shakiri doesn't win, how long are we going to be loving the hair and the nails? I, my coach used to say it just like this. Don't come to practice on the red carpet. And he wasn't talking physically. He was talking mentally. Oh, you letting the brand lead you here? Trust me, they gonna turn over a new player, a new person that's gonna win and build a brand. Da -da -da -da, Sydney McLaughlin. Now, look out in other sports, other people who are buying into this. Like, it don't matter as long as I pop off. Someone is gonna do what you are not doing, which is win, and they gonna pop off even greater. We'll see how it adds up, but thank you, Sydney, for having the OG mindset of doing it the right way.